Okay, it's re recording. Uh, Mr. Bourne, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm. We're, are you ready for your citizenship interview? Okay, great. Yes. Okay, uh, so we're gonna start with the civics questions first. What is the supreme law of the land? The constitution. What is the economic system of the United States? Capitalist economy. The House of Representatives has how many voting members? 435. If bo both the president and vice president can no longer serve, who becomes the president? The Speaker of the House. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the federal government. What is one power of the federal government? To print money. What are two rights of everyone living in the United States? Uh, speech and religion. What are, uh, excuse me, why did the colonists fight the British? Um, because of high taxation. What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? Louisiana. Who did the United States fight in the World War II? Japan, Italy, and Germany. Name one U.S. territory. Uh, Puerto Rico. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Mr. Bourne. Now we're going to go on to uh, the, uh, the citizenship N-400 portion of the exam. Uh, please raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Put down your hand. What did you just promise? I will tell the truth. Explain to me how you are eligible to become a U.S. citizen. I have been a permanent resident for five years. Okay. Uh, did you originally, what visa did you really originally enter into the United States with? I came on the student visa, F1. Okay, and then it was transferred to an H, uh, an HB1 or HB2 visa? A H1B visa. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, and what is your current legal name? Jason Bourne. And is the name on your green card the same as your current legal name? Yes. What is your date of birth? Uh, February 1st, 1940. And what is your country of birth? Uh, India. And what is your country of nationality? India. Are you requesting any accommodations because of a physical disability? No, I'm not. Uh, what is your current home address? It is 111 Jason Bourne Lane, Jason Bourne City. <laughs> okay, in California? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, and uh, do you have any previous home addresses? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, how do you support yourself? I am currently working. Okay. Uh, have you taken any trips outside the United States during the past five years? Yes. How many trips have you taken outside of the United States in the past five years? Uh, about seven trips. And how many total days did you spend outside of the United States? About 60 days. Okay. Um, and um, where did you go for most of those trips? Uh, to India. Can you tell me about your last trip? When did you leave and when did you return? I went to India in uh, November of 2019 and returned back by the end of the month. Okay. What is your current marital status? I'm single. And, um, <clears throat> and do you have any children? No. Okay. Have you ever claimed to be a U.S. citizen? No. Have you ever voted in the United States? No. Do you have any title of nobility in a foreign country? No. Have you ever been declared legally incompetent? No. What is legally incompetent? Uh, when the doctor basically says that 
I cannot make decisions on my own or judgments on my own. Thank you so much. Have you ever failed to file your taxes? No. Do you owe any back taxes? No, I don't. Do you belong to any groups or organizations? No, I don't. You don't belong to any secret organizations? No. I seem to remember a movie about that. Okay, <laughs> let's continue on. H have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? No. What is communism? Uh, it is a form of uh, government where the government owns everything. The, the people don't own anything. Okay. And have you ever been a member of a totalitarian party? No. Okay. And have you ever been a terrorist? No. Have you ever fought against terrorists? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just shared the name with Jason Bourne. <laughs> okay. have, you, have you ever... Okay. That's not you on the movies? Okay. No. Have you ever advocated the overthrow of any government by either force or violence? No. Okay. Have you ever persecuted any person because of race, religion, national origin, or member of any particular so social group or political opinion? No. Have you ever participated in genocide? No. Now, what is genocide? It is when people are killed. Okay. Well, are they the same group as you or they would, be, would they be a different group than you? Different group. Okay. Have you ever tortured someone? No. Okay. Have you ever tried to kill uh, someone on purpose? No. Have you ever tried to badly hurt a person on purpose? No. Okay. Have you ever... Uh, stop someone pr from practicing his or her religion no have you ever participated in a military unit rebel group or militia no have you ever been a member of a gang no have you ever been arrested or committed a crime no what is a crime uh when someone breaks the law okay have you ever been a habitual drunkard no what is a habitual drunkard? Someone who, who lives on alcohol, drinks a lot of alcohol. Okay. Have you ever sold or smuggled illegal drugs or narcotics? No. Okay. And what are, can you give me an example of Ill illegal drugs? Uh, it, that would be like heroin. Okay, good. Have you ever tried to, d excuse me. Uh, have you ever been married to more than one person at the same time? No. Okay. Uh, did you ever try to marry someone to get an immigration benefit? No. Have you ever gambled illegally? No. Have you ever lied to the U.S. government to get public benefits? No. And what are public benefits? This is when the government is supporting you if you are fitting a certain category. Okay, and um, have you ever been deported? No. Okay, and do you support the U.S. Constitution and form of government? Yes, I do. What is our form of government? Uh, it's a representative democracy. Okay, and what is, uh, what is the Constitution? Uh, the Constitution is the supreme law, basically, of, of the United States. Do you support, uh, excuse me, do you understand the full oath of allegiance to the United States? Yes, I do. And what is an oath? It's a promise. And what is allegiance? It's my loyalty. Okay. And are you willing to take the full oath of allegiance to the U.S. government? Yes, I am. And if the law requires it, are you willing to bear arms in the U.S. armed forces? Yes, I am. What is to bear arms? To hold weapons. Okay, and uh, are you willing to perform non-combatant services in the U.S. Army? Yes, I am. What is non-combatant? Uh, it's like, you know, uh, helping out with uh, duties such as cooking, uh, driving, and, you know, the non-combatant part of the, the services. Okay, great. And are you willing to help the government during a national emergency? Yes, I am. Do you promise everything that you've said is true? Yes. I so do. thank you so much. Congratulations and congratulations on really practicing.
uh, passing your interview. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Um, you know, the the most important part is arriving there on time because it helps you to focus better, to be more in the moment. So get there early on time, find parking, uh, drink some water, right? So that you have a clear voice. And when you, uh, you know, go upstairs and check in, be patient, there'll be other people waiting. We're in really difficult times for COVID right now. So uh, expect that there might be some delays uh, at times, but usually they are very prompt and they'll come and inform you about it. Uh, sometimes the officer will not be there in the room with you. Sometimes they will be there in the room with you, uh, but there will always be someone assisting you to make sure that the uh, you know connection is there, you're able to talk, um, be really humble in your interview and yes. uh, everything will go well. Okay. So. Well, so when you had your interview, was the officer actually in the room or was he the person officer on the screen? Officer was on the screen. Okay. And was, were you using an iPad? Um, Do you remember? It was some sort of a screen, I believe, looked like an iPad, but I didn't pay attention closely to it. Okay, and um, so is there anything that happened during the interview that you were not prepared for? No, no, it was really well uh, taken care of. Uh, the officer was very uh, nice, spoke in a way that I could understand her uh, questions. So it was really well done, actually. Do you remember anything about your civics questions or your uh, dictation question? Um, I think the question that I was asked was around constitution, like, you know, what's the supreme law of the land? Um, then the other one was, uh, you know, what territory did the United States buy? So that one was there for sure. Um, and there were a couple others, uh, which I don't remember right now. Um, but, you know, if you practice through the 100 and attend your Zoom calls, right, um, they, they are very helpful. Like, you okay. know, you ideally, like, memorizing the questions helps, but really understanding them helps even better. So uh, the session that I did with you, Jennifer, a couple months ago, oh, where you. you did a map and you drew the rivers, you drew, you know, these are the states uh, closer to uh, Canada, these are the ones closer to Mexico. I never needed to learn them afterwards, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so visual for me. Okay. Uh, that was very helpful. So maybe, so maybe if, especially students, and if they can have pictures in their mind and then attach the information to it, that might be, that's how I learn. Um, yeah. And so um, is there, Anything that we could do to help students learn better? Um, or do you have any other tips for, for people who are trying to prepare for the US citizenship interview? I just think that, uh, you know, to attend your Zoom calls would be a really good um, uh, orientation for them. You guide them in the right direction. They need to work hard for it, for sure. Um, prepare on their N-400. A lot of times what happens is when we fill up the N-400 and when the interview happens, it's maybe a year, maybe later. So people tend to forget what they've kept and in, in the, what they've written in the N-400. So it's important to really revise that. You don't need to memorize it because you've written honest information over there, but at least you know having an idea about what dates, you don't need to remember the exact dates, but roughly what month, what year, that's very helpful. Um, the date that you got your green card is also very important because they will ask you that. <laughs> um, so that's very important. Um, and, you know, overall, just be humble. As I said, listen really carefully. And if you do not understand a question, ask. Yeah. Have to repeat the question. Yeah, or ask them to... Uh, just say that I don't understand. Can you say it another way? So don't, if you don't understand, don't say yes, don't say no, ask them to explain mm -hmm. it to you. 
Um, do you remember if they um, used, if they asked you to define any vocabulary during your interview? Because some people are so afraid that they will be asked that it, I, t I tell my students that it's not a vocabulary quiz. They're just yeah. simply trying to see if you're understanding what you're saying yes and no to. Did, yeah, they didn't remember? ask me okay. any vocabulary questions. They did ask me questions like the one that you asked about, are you a habitual drunkard? And, you know, so you should know what those basic sentences are. What do they mean? You know, what's the meaning of allegiance, right? Those basically they need to know what's totalitarian, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are the basic questions that you need to understand. I, again, I don't feel you need to learn them as such. If you really understand them, you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Good. And um, do you, um, do you, what are your plans now? That because didn't you didn't you receive your oath of allegiance on the same day in your office? Yes. Yes. Okay. I was, that's uh, excellent. Yeah, I was fortunate because my interview was a uh, little bit before noon, um, so it it really helped because the I think the last oath ceremony is at about two o'clock. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was done, it was twelve thirty. So it had it had just enough time for them to prepare the certificate, print it, send it to the oath ceremony place because it's in the same building, but you have to move out from where you interviewed, go around the building, stand in the queue, and then go into the room where you swear the oath with other people. So okay. it takes a little bit of time. Um, and they do try to accommodate uh, as many people as possible on the same day or, you know, a day off. Um, their choosing but you know it's sooner rather than later yeah in san jose we have to our students have to come back for their oath mm -hmm. ceremony um what are your plans now that you have now that you are a u.s citizen what what do you have any special plans um any travel plans or anything like that uh not travel plans per se but uh i I do plan to celebrate a little bit of time with uh, the family. Oh, and, excellent. And the, uh, where, where life takes. Uh, I do have an ambition to start my own company and do a lot of cool things. Uh, so a lot of those dreams do come true, which do come true even after the green card, but you feel a lot more freer and, you know, after the citizenship for sure. Wow. I'm so happy for you. And I hope you write some more books too. So anyway, okay, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to talking to you today and um, just have a really great life. Thank you. Thank you. I know you will be a great American citizen. Bye-bye. Bye. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.